Every second Thursday is Roger Montgomery night. Well, I tell him as it is. And tonight he's looking critically at what a good prospector should really tell investors. Welcome, Roger. How are you, mate? I'm well. Nice to see you. Now, really, have you had an experience that the, 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 the criteria that you used to select a company was all ticked all the boxes, but then something came from left field that meant that you, you made a bad investment, like a government decision, a yeah, crazy well, CEO who did something. You, has that happened in your investment career? Um, yes, yeah. in, in a past in a, a past life, yes, yeah. it did. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, there's not much you can do about no. it, particularly if the company is not telling you the truth about, mm. about its prospects. Um, however, having said that, um, you mitigate lots and lots of risk by looking for very good quality businesses mm. Um, and you know we have the A1 to C5 method yeah. for actually yeah. determining that. So that's that removes one lot of risks, mm. and then you're buying at big discounts to intrinsic value, mm. and that reduces the risk of you paying too much, uh, and that so that removes another very significant risk. Yeah. So if we can remove most of the risks, and then we uh, we have some diversification in the portfolio, yeah. so we're not we're never betting the farm on any one thing. Yeah. And how many um, stocks do you have generally in your fund? Well, at the yeah. moment in the fund, there's there's 12 stocks mm. in the fund. Mm. Having said that, though, we're accumulating. You might remember a fortnight ago, everyone was really keen to find out what gold stock I'm, I'm mm. buying, and mm. I'm still not disclosing it because mm. we're still in the process of buying it. Mm. Um, and so we've got we've got 12 odd stocks. We've only invested. Literally, we've only invested about 12 or 13 per cent. Now, as at last Thursday, the fund was up, the total fund was up 3.28 per cent mm. versus the market, which were, our, our benchmark, which was down 0.39. And that's only with 12 per cent invested. Mm. Um, so we're in the what process of establishing. What are you doing with the other? other? Just, well, we try and maximise the interest rate, yeah, you, know, you know, either in term deposits or in bank bills. Yeah try and get the highest rate we can. Uh, um, and we're going to get prospectors in the end, but you also saw Jim Rogers. Yeah, Rogers I know make, Jim. Yeah, but you, you, he was in Australia. Did he make you positive or negative towards stocks going forward? Uh, he's cautious on stocks mm. and very bullish. He, on he'll say, isn't he? He's big on he'll gold. Say, so. If he sat down with you, he'll, he'll say, Peter, you've got to get rid of this financial market stuff, buy a tractor. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. what he's going to tell you, you yeah, know, yeah. get then, into agriculture. Yeah. Real businesses, um, okay. But the reality is, you know, the reality is you can have a farm, and he knows this as well as anyone, you can have a farm and uh, you could be trying to grow wheat and the wheat price could be going to record highs and you've got none because yeah. it's been eaten by, you know, by locusts Flood, or flies, flooded or... Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so owning a farm... Um, yeah, it comes back to that point that I make yeah. in commodities. I like to own the commodity, mm. not a company or a farm. Mm. You know, I'd prefer to own the commodity. Okay, right. Okay. Now, prospectus. Yes. W what made you want to talk about prospectus tonight? Well, as you know, um, and many viewers may know, and if they don't, you're about to find out, um, that uh, uh, ASIC has come out and made some noises about changes to prospectuses. They don't like the fact that the first 25 pages contains um, semi-clad models, um, you know, yeah. in, look, some Maya. some, I mean, Maya. Hey, <laughs> some how could you forget like it, the but... Maya prospectus? In fact, uh, Simon brought in Victor uh, Victoria's closet. Victoria's Secret. <laughs> yeah, secret. <laughs> Victoria's <laughs> movie, closet. Wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. But 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 the point is that there are things in the prospectus which are supposed to be there. Yeah. And for a long time, and let me just read out what ASIC... ASIC, okay, ASIC, ASIC actually offered some guidance on what should be in a prospectus. Yeah. It should include... A, it should say... Well, it should include all information that investors and their professional advisors would reasonably require to make an informed assessment of the issuer and the securities being offered. Yeah. Um, and then it says it should include a description of the business and its structure, strategies and plans, financial information, information about prospects, risks, a description of important contracts, use of proceeds, backgrounds of senior managers and directors, details of their remuneration, dividend policy, and it goes on and on. Okay. Prospectuses have all that. Yeah, I thought I was going to say, so what's, how what's different? Come, so how come people lose money on these things because stuff comes out afterwards that they didn't know about? Mm. And the reason is, what's happened is we've now got these boilerplate statements that subvert what people really need to Is know. Is describe a boiler state, a boiler well, a, plate state? Okay, so exa for example, um, uses and sources of or, or sources and uses of funds. So there's invariably a, a template mm -hmm. that is a table and it comes out in a prospectus and in that prospectus it'll say funds, we're going to raise this much money and we're going to use uh, 
$50 million is, is going to the vendors, mm. um, $3 million is going to the advisors, mm. uh, and the remainder is going to pay down debt and for working capital. Yeah. And, and so you think, oh, well, I've got all the information I need. Yeah. Well, actually, you don't. Why not? Because it's not describing it in the context of what's going to happen to the company before and after the float. And I'll give you an example. Okay. So there was a company that I wrote about some years ago called Cool or Cozy. Um, and it was an insulation business. Um, and they were issuing 8.5 million shares, or 23% of the company, at 20 cents each. Mm. Um, the founders were keeping 77% of the company. So far, so good. They've got skin in the game. Yeah. Right? OK. Now, Section 1.1... So they're raising about $1.7 million. Okay. Not very much. Okay. Section 1.1 said, the perp under the title Purpose yeah. of the Issue, the proceeds from the offer will be used, and I'm quoting, will be used by the company to help fund the further expansion of the business based on the strategies the company has developed. Yeah, you think, yes. So you think, okay, Great. they're taking the money, yep. putting it in the company, so they're going to grow the business. Yep, okay. okay, fine. All right, so aside from the fact that $1.7 million is not that much money, mm -hmm. and 200000 of that was going to the advisors. Now, the advising company mm -hmm. may or may not have been related to one of the directors, okay. but... That's an aside. Okay. So they're left with $1.5 million. Yeah. Now, um, the pro forma, this is where everyone needs to look, and this is the problem. There's a pro forma balance sheet, mm. and that's the bit that you really want to see, because what it says is the pro forma balance sheet says, this is what the balance sheet of the company would look like had the company already floated and done all the float shenanigans yeah. at so the that, last report. OK, so, so it takes... A the, 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 the existing balance sheet, if you like, or the last one was done, and then extrapolates and forward to what's going to look like yeah, so after you've invested What's going to happen it? after you've invested exactly. in it? Okay, okay yeah. so the pro forma accounts showed something. One of the things they showed was that there was a provision for a dividend to the vendors of $2.2 million. Mm -hmm. Right. So in other words, when it floats, the, the, the vendors are going to take out $2.2 million. Mm. All right, so they're raising $1.7 million. Yeah. They're paying 200 in costs. Yeah. They're going to take out a dividend of $2.2 million. The company will end up with $600,000 less cash after they listed than before they listed. Yeah. And they said that they were going to use the money to help fund the further expansion yeah. of the business. Yeah. Now, where was this? This was these, Where was this information? Yeah. It was on page 33 and page 32 yeah. of the prospectus. Yeah. What private investor goes to page yeah. 32 or yeah, 33 yeah, of the prospectus? Yeah, exactly right. Now, there's no protection in big companies either. No. Okay? So the same thing happened with Maya. Mm. You know, Maya said the purpose of the offer and the use of the proceeds, which is on page 28, there were 27 yeah, pages yeah. of um, some girls with wearing nice clothes. That, they were um, very nice pages, those pages. I'm sure they were. Yeah. And the, distracted let's just remember, let's just keep this in perspective. Way, we ran against Meyer on this, on this okay, program. Okay, and, and so did I. Yeah, I, I yeah, wrote about, yeah. about it and said that it was expensive anyway. But so, purpose of the offer, use of proceeds, again, quote, the purpose of the offer is to achieve listing on the ASX. <laughs> really? Yeah, okay. That's great. And provide Meyer with additional financial flexibility to produce growth opportunities, improve access to capital markets. Mm. If you're a good business, you don't need any capital, mm. so you don't need access to capital markets, mm. okay, provide a liquid market for shares, fair enough, provide an opportunity for employees and customers to invest in the company. Yeah. Well, employees can invest in an unlisted business. Mm. You can give them shares if yeah. the business yeah. isn't yeah. listed. Yeah. Well, what's um, your time? We're, we're going okay, to sorry. Tight. The proceeds of the offer will be applied to pay for the, pur pay for the purchase of existing shares from the sale company. Yeah. In other words, pay the vendors, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, repay yeah, the debt and pay down the costs. Yeah. Now, when you actually went through the numbers in the pro forma balance sheet, um, what actually happened is that the company, before it listed, had $885 million of cash before they listed, and after they listed, they were going to end up with $25 million of cash. They're going to have less cash. Big difference, isn't to, it? And they said that they, were going, they needed additional financial flexibility to pursue growth opportunities yeah. with okay. less cash. Okay, so the bottom line is... Take, I've got some advice yeah. for ASIC. Yeah. Okay, take the impact of the float on the balance sheet of the company, put it in natural English yeah. and put it on page one of the prospectus. Oh, yeah, it's exactly. Very simple. Well, I say about financial plans, that should have the same thing. What are you paying and what's yeah. going to happen? But in, in, all financial plans are, are buried uh, you know, in 25, 50, 100 pages worth of... Hmm. 
crap often. Well, All right, good, good so point. I'm going to work now, on Greg this. Greg Metcalf, is, is, has, has he been appointed at Essex, new boss? I don't know. I haven't looked. I've only looked at the at the history okay. around okay. prospectuses. Well, the guy who's taking over comes with a financial background, but you're absolutely right. There's something we should pursue in the future, mate. I'm going to write this up yeah. and, and hope, put it up on the blog. Hopefully, ASIC will take a look at it. Oh, no, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll invite some of ASIC on the program. But Okay, great.